Art in itself is always abstraction. Even if I'm trying to paint a flower, that flower will be an amount of paint in a, in a canvas, is of a different nature. I'm by nature an abstract artist, which means that the images I create, even though they are inspired by nature and, and people and feelings and emotions, they are constructed in a way that they have some uh, conceptual background because it's my research. I did actually a PhD <laughs> as an artist because I was very interested how I could construct my own references based on art history, which is an element that is very important in my artwork. And then I was very interested always, and I'm still interested in the poetic dimension of the paintings, which means beyond what they uh, might look like, what kind of extra feeling you can get out of them or meaning. This is from another series I did a while ago. I always found that colors are the most intuitive part of that poetic nature of the paintings because everybody generally can relate to a color. It always has some words in it, collage, using hearts, etc. These are older, older landscapes, but very pointeist and very abstract too. One of my references in my art is pointeism. It's early 19th century. If you add dots of different colors, then uh, when you look at them at the distance in your brain, it becomes something else. Definitely, by looking at nature, I get very inspired, especially in the colors and shapes and forms, structures of nature. Nothing ever is the same, and if I repeat it constantly, something is like a meditation process, visually. I'm repeating, and by repeating, I'm creating something different. There's always something that will come out of it. In an aggregation of branches, suspended in a celestial quadrant from where the sun absents itself. I was very interested in a poetic dimension in art. But at that time, the poetic dimension for me was not necessarily to collaborate with a poet or a writer, but it was mostly uh, when you do something and you put a lot of thinking and uh, in intellectual process, there's something that is born out of it that is of the poetic nature. That's when I came up with the 10 impressions of Rose and Sea that then became a book and then it became a show and then it became a collaboration later on. But with this particular poet, with Nunu Judis, which is a, a poet that I absolutely love and is published in many languages, I said, OK, let's do something together. And I start from zero and he starts from zero. So I created a set of paintings, he looked at them and he created, ten, in this case, ten poems. The poems are not to illustrate the paintings, the paintings are not to illustrate the poems. That's the big difference. There's a third dimension, or whatever you want to call it, but is a, a result of a dialogue. And that, for me, that's what really I'm interested in doing now. The first show I did, it was the book lounge, it was in Paris. It was the book coming out, we had the, shows, the show on the wall and the, the poetry next to it. And then an, another question arose was maybe it would be interesting to have somebody reading the poetry. At the Cinema Art Center, for me, it was quite special to have the, the exhibition there because the cinema, for me, it's, a, it's my family, in a way, my chosen family. And I said, this makes sense at the cinema because this involves a certain type of audience. And then we had another member of the, of the board, Shirley Roman, that read the poetry. The shadow of a cloud projected onto the tedium of fog. And then we have the paintings projected on a screen. So that's why the cinema really made sense <laughs> to have this show. 
in the transparency of the afternoon, and its color empties the horizon of jellyfish, imprints on the heart of the gaze of a constellation of petals, and makes a fire of leaves rotate in the thought of things. A face vacillates in the dark lamp of a traveler. Could he have missed his destination? Or could he remain imprisoned in the room of his memory, stumbling over the images of which the darkness robs him? Or could it only be an abandoned face of a blind idol, exercising the ritual of conjunctions, inebriated by the glass of sun, drunk to the bottom of lava and of ash. To divide a color by its forms until a shade of white is found, and to shed its petals in the autumn of the hands, on the reverse of the flower, obscure flower. The touch of love rules a movement of arms in the entanglement of the branches, like light gestures in the silence of the sheets. A flight of butterflies, like leaves of autumn, puts itself in the field of gaze. And I don't know if there were wings, clouds of color, a fog of old sentiments in the air, but they had the form of an archipelago without end, like islands inside of islands. And I search in each one of them the horizon from where the light is born and where the light died. Lights flowering, myriads in the sea of murmurs that the eyes cross, the red-headed navigators of that rumor without direction, and the center explodes Signs shrouded by drowned syllables in a lake of sound that the lips enunciate. Mountain ranges inclined upon the valley of liquid revulsions. The shadow of a cloud projected onto the tedium of fog. A tracery of fish scales upon a fabric of ruins. I enter the atrium of the forest and cross its arches until the center ogives sculpted into an end knot of gargoyle, threads of ecstasy braided into a torrent of clips. A smudged mirror of memories illuminates itself, and a distant body emerges in the dawn of salt, opened like a starfish in the display of a dream. And learn from the slow sewing of the butterflies in their cocoon of leaves. I hear the breathing of the apprentices of metamorphosis, and I liberate them from the commerce of the images. Limit yourself to see, I say to them. The secret of color belongs to the inventor of wings, to those who know the paths of lightning, to those whose hands drips the juice from the button of a flower. And I hear in the uncertain silence of their lips a 
the deflowering of doubts and the instant when the bird emerges intact and pure from its own reflection. The audience in the end was asking questions and that for me was amazing. It's good because they are questions. I never know what people are going to ask me and I never know what I'm going to answer. <laughs> so <laughs> We've got um, kind of a, the macrocosm and the microcosm. I think it gave me a great opportunity to share at the deeper level my work. It's a very good question. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, in fact, it's true. I work with fake geometry. Uh, generally, you see all these organic forms and you see the symmetry and the geometry. Initially, okay, we put the, the paintings on the walls. Actually, they, I like to see them there and the, and the poetry. But the big thing for me was the, the event that we were all there. The, actually, the cinema was extremely gener generous. Everybody, I really felt so happy. It was a happy event, emotionally very rewarding for me. It makes sense that this exhibition is now here because you made the circuit outside, but this is like coming home, okay? Thank you very much. If you don't know the person, but you like her right away, something inside you relates to that person. The same applies to art. If you look at the painting, or whatever form of art you talk about, if you can relate at that level, that you like, even though you don't know why you like it, that's a starting point.